Hello, my friends. This is Manu, and uh, I am a spiritual seeker from Colombia, a uh, walker of the path of shamanic wisdom. And today I want to talk about a very important subject, one that I've had the opportunity to discuss with close friends, and I think it's particularly pertinent for my country, Colombia, these days. When we are in the middle of a struggle to turn the page and leave behind more than 50 years of civil war that has left rivers of blood and fear, especially in the rural side of the country. Maybe you haven't heard this, but um, this war uh, was about to end this month in a counter signature plebiscite where all us Colombians were supposed to say yes to the peace treaty between the government and the communist or socialist guerrillas that still thrive in Colombia. Well, as it turned out, people, or better, 50.4% of the few people who actually went and voted the plebiscite decided to say no to the Habana Accords. Yes, exactly the same that happened to the UK when everybody thought their Brexit referendum was going to be a mere formality to keep quiet the anti-EU protesters. And then suddenly they woke up realizing that they had just made the first step to get the hell out of the European Union. So, so the question in this case was what went wrong? Weren't they supposed or uh, weren't we supposed as the world to be moving towards a more liberal, open and progressive world? Well, the obvious answer is a big bold no, we're not. And the biggest proof of that is what many have called the probable next surprise after the Brexit and then the Colombian plebiscite. The United States presidential election this year. At first, it seemed a clean road for the first female president in the history of America, only having to deal with the frivolous, megalomaniac, and ultra rightist Donald Trump. Now, this campaign has become a very dirty one with an uncertain outcome, where the right wing, the very right wing, could give the world another surprise, which most of us don't really want to happen. So maybe we should not be surprised at all. Rightist and somewhat leftist or more liberal governments and ideological waves have been interleaving one after another like a pendulum, going back and forth like there's no way of winning for good. We can see uh, governments from the left side or at least center with more liberal ideas and then a conservative one. Uh, even in those well-known communist or socialist countries we see more conservatives and liberal periods interleaving. Although usually those last longer in, in, than in countries where the democracy or the representative democracy facilitates this alternation more often, like every four years or every eight years or so. But I'm not here to discuss politics, or at least I'm not going to focus on the ideological perspective of this phenomenon. Instead, I want to elaborate on how this exact same problem lies in the very foundation of our consciousness as human beings. As you have already read in the beginning, and you, you will know where this comes from. In the beginning, God have had us living happily and hassle-free in the paradise. The only caveat was, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Yes, in other words, you will either Avoid God and keep from understanding anything beyond your little garden, or you will be, and, and, and thus you will pre be protected by that God, or you will be evicted from this from His premises, and you will have to be on your own. 
with the burden of having to earn your daily your daily bread and to undergo the wrath of God. Now keep in mind that the Bible was written commissioned by Yahweh. So of course our curious and disobedient first ancestors Adam and Eve were condemned as sinners stained by the original fowl and the snake became the representation of the evil of the gainsayer let's say but it turns out that this very same story is told in another book or another scripture even older than the bible the sumerian tablets found in nippur an ancient um mesopotamian city around well it was written around 5000 bc it describes a very similar tale but in this one there are no good or evil forces but a whole bunch of superior beings or gods uh, that they call the elohim or the anunnaki and they were divided into factions and in the middle it was their genetically created slave species at their mercy the human being us one of these factions was led by Enlil the god of breath as, as they knew him he was the ruler of the upper world or the northern hemisphere and allegedly the commander of the Anunnakis along with Anu his father another god both of them hot tempered, militaristic and authoritarian. They believe the human should remain under control, limited and blinded to their or our divine nature and with our powers severed. The humans they thought were only created to serve them. On the other side there was Enki. He was another son of Anu, but with a very different point of view about the humankind. He also believed that humans were slaves, of course, but he also thought that we had the right to know, to know our divine origin and eventually to set free from the slavery they, they themselves had put us on. For this reason, this God that was also represented by the snake and who was regarded as the ruler of the lower world in the but actually it meant the, the southern hemisphere was the one who lured the men into contradicting the rules of Anu and Enlil and realized uh, and, and, and allowed us realize that we could be just our um, creators so there you go you got yourself the oldest traceable origins of liberals and conservatives one team offers protection, provision, and safety as long as you don't think for yourself. You just obey and follow the rules. And the other, the other side, tells you that you should free your soul from any external control. And you should discover the universe and define your own destiny. Sound familiar? It should, because that is, that is the drama that us humans have been living for thousands of years. Do you accept God as your shepherd? Um, forget about asking why and how and just follow his commandments? If so, you get Yahweh's favor and approval. And hopefully a nice reward after you die. But you can as well take the other road. You can acknowledge yourself as a divine entity, recognize your fellow humans as divine too embrace the science and as the source of any valid knowledge and use this self-realization as the only way to release your potential and transcend the human state the only problem here is once you have chosen one side you feel comfortable with you become enemy of the of those in the other side including their gods, of course, and they will fight hard to get you back to their hosts. So this is the famous spiritual war. 
a war that is not between God and evil, or the good and the evil, as both factions that I just I have just described um, will make you believe that the, they are the good ones. The real fight in this case is between religion and uh, esotericism, let's call it, or self-realization, between riding on your God's hands or building your own soul and fighting for a place in eternity for your own merits. And this battle takes place in your consciousness constantly. Every, every time you make a decision between doing what your heart, your heart tells you or making the right thing according to your system of beliefs and morale, the battlefield is all the set of ideological questions, strongly personal, I think, that nevertheless have a deep impact on socio-political scenarios. Like, do women and men have the same rights? Do women have the right of deciding whether to stop or not their pregnancy? Should we accept people to embrace diverse sexual orientations? Can we love and share with more than one person at a time? Should we take God out from our classrooms and governments and let science and pragmatism be the only drivers of education and law? Those are not easy questions, of course, and none of them have a right or wrong answer outside the system of beliefs of every single person. In my country, the question is right now, should we just forgive all the damage that the guerrillas have done and let them skip jail, participate in democracy, and give them money to support them until they are fully incorporated in the civil life? Or should we instead force them to surrender and forget their claims, even if that means coming back to the war and losing many more soldiers and peasants' lives to achieve that? That is the confusion some Colombians still have. The same way many Americans are still debating whether they keep the status quo and of, of um, the known liberal or sort of liberal politics with Hillary Clinton, or should they jump to the void, I would say, and move to a much more conservative and right-winged government with Mr. Donald Trump. And it is the same confusion I still have personally, when my European and Native American ancestral lineages face each other. On the first, I've come from several generations of Catholic and Jewish ancestors who were highly religious and conservatives, and on the other hand, uh, my Native American heritage. I have a lot of the indigenous, shamanic, spiritual background uh, traces that my ancestor lived and honored. I could say I have already chosen one side, of course, uh, just because I lean towards shamanism, liberal thinking, and science, and because I'm strongly against interfering in another person's personal decision. I'm against uh, any religious imposition in anybody and, and, and also I'm against believing something you cannot test, uh, something that you can feel, experience. But then again, I would be lying as I am and probably I will always be at least at some level uh, somewhat religious, judgmental, fearful of offending God. It's deep inside my consciousness. So my conclusion is uh, this humanity is far from liberating from religion and who knows maybe that is the way it's meant to be. I don't have the judgment to tell whether that's good or bad. The only thing I know is I love myself when I am a shaman but also I love myself when I'm religious and I believe we should love others when they are liberal, but also love them when they are very conservative. I believe that we should not accept to be divided, 
even when we think different, just like we should not accept the guilt and frustration when we change our minds and move to the left or, the, or, the, or, or move to the right. Well, this is not our war. Those gods who supposedly created us uh, inherited somehow us with their hatred and their ego. And we have been living centuries feeling guilty for our original sin, so as, as they call it, but also for our lack of will to emancipate ourselves. When I voted for the peace of my country, I voted yes to, the, to seal this peace with the guerrillas. But since the no supporters, with those who supported the other position, they won, I realized that the thought part was not to accept the peace with the FARC, with the guerrillas. It was really hard to accept uh, the peace with those who think different than me, those who prefer the war over forgiveness. So here I am saying yes to the peace with them, yes to the peace with Donald Trump and his followers, and yes to the peace with myself when I decide to be more religious and also when I decide to break the rules. Condemnation only exists here in our minds, but redemption only comes from here, from our hearts. Have a good day. Bye.